let's start with a real quick overview of Strapi. Now, as you can see, Strapi is currently at version 4. And if you use Strapi before, you could have used version 3, which also has its own documentation. And you can find both of these on docs.strapi.io. But for the purposes of this course, I am going to be using Strapi version 4. And also, if you're using Strapi version 4, just make sure that you see all these V4 references all over the place in the docs. If you see that, then you are at the right place. So Strapi has its name from two terms because it, the original intention of the project was to allow developers to bootstrap their API. The second part of bootstrap is, of course, strap. And then we have the APIs. And that's how the name Strapi came about. Now, Strapi is an open source headless CMS, which means that its entire source code is available on GitHub. In fact, you can go to this GitHub organization from the docs and you will find everything open source here. The Strapi code base, the components library and everything that they use along with a nice little timeline here as well. And of course, all sorts of documentation and projects and issues and repositories that you would expect any open source project to have. So what we're going to be doing is first, we're going to set up Strapi locally on our machines. And in order to do so, you need to make sure that you have certain prerequisites, such as a Node.js installed. And of course, if you have Node.js installed, you will also have NPM installed. So you can use Node.js versions 12 plus, and I have the latest LTS version, which is 16.14. And of course, I also have NPM installed, but you can use Yarn as well. That's not going to be a problem. Strapi being a headless CMS will store its data in a database, and you can pick from SQLite, PostgreSQL, MySQL, and MariaDB. Each of these have certain version requirements or certain minimum versions that you must have, you can consult the documentation that I just showed you again, which is docs.strapi.io to see the exact minimum versions that you need for each of these databases. Now, how do we set up Strapi? Well, we're going to be using MPX in the command prompt here, and I'm just going to call this tool that goes by the name of create Strapi app and I'm going to grab the latest tag release followed by a space and now I can give my project a name and I'm just going to call it films you can call it whatever else you want now if I hit enter I'm going to be presented by a question whether I want to install create strappy app if you see that just say yes if you've done that before you're not going to see that prompt and then the next thing that I need to pick from either the quick start or the custom installation type. Now, quick start is recommended, but even though it's recommended, I'm still going to go with a custom installation, which will allow me to select certain things. And I just want to go through those with you. So I'm going to go custom. And now I can select the database. Now for local development purposes, the easiest database to use is going to be SQLite. So I'm going to go with that. The next thing that I have on my screen is the name of the file, i.e. where should SQLite store its data? And I'm just going to store that locally in a TMP folder, which is going to be in the project root. And data.db is the default file name, so that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to hit enter. And now Strapi is going to create some files and it will also install the dependencies. So this can take a couple of minutes. So I'm going to wait for this to finish and then we're going to continue from there. The installation has now completed. And as you can see, I have the application created in that folder, which is absolutely great. And I also have a list of available commands. Now, because I use Yarn, I'm being presented the yarn commands. If you don't have yarn, you're going to see the NPM equivalent of these. So I can do yarn develop, yarn start, build, yarn strappy. And then of course, what I need to do first is go into the right folder and then execute any of these commands. Now for local development purposes, I am of course going to run yarn develop because every time 
there's a change or if I do something in my strap instance and it requires a restart, an automatic restart will happen. So I don't need to come and close the running process and so on and so forth. Um, you have start and build, which do slightly different things. And Yarn Shopee will list all the available commands. So we can go into films and just run Yarn Shopee so that we see all the available commands, which you can see quite a lot of them. So these are all related to Strapi itself. So you can generate a brand new project from a template. So Strapi also supports that. You can install plugins, uninstall plugins, but more on that later. You can also list, you know, content types and routes and everything else. We're not going to look into those, but what we'll do is just execute yarn develop. Just make sure again that you go into the project folder that you created. So yarn develop is going to build an admin UI. So let me just scroll up a little bit. So it says building your admin UI with development configuration. And then it says admin UI built successfully. And as you can see, we are running in development mode. This is my strappy version and that's my node version. And I'm on the community edition. Amazing. And it then warns us to do one more thing. Create your first administrator by going to the administration panel at localhost 1337 forward slash admin. Okay, so let's do that. Let me go to my browser here and go to localhost 1337. And if I go there, then I'm being presented with the screen that says, let's get started. Create your first administrator. So I'm going to hit this button. Okay, and here we are. Here's the registration form for an admin user. Now the user that you set up here, you can think of it as almost like your super user, right? This particular user is going to have access to everything and is going to be your, your main administrator for the entire Strapi instance. So just make sure that you, you know, you trust these people or trust that uh, one person. So I'm going to add my email and I'm going to add the password of test one, two, three, four, and Test one, two, three, four with a capital T and let's start. Awesome. So what you see here is your Strapi dashboard or essentially the admin UI. And the admin UI allows you to manage your content types, manage your content, check your plugins, add, modify users, change some settings, and essentially anything admin related can be done using the admin UI. Now, what's really great about Strapi is that it does have this admin UI so that some of your users can actually come in and they can manage the content using a very nice looking UI. So maybe some of your users are not going to be that technical. They don't know how to do Git commits and how to manage markdown files as a content. And so it's going to be much easier for them to be able to come in here, log in with the username and password, see the content, change that, modify that, so on and so forth. So let's quickly go through the options that we have on the left-hand side. So first we have a content manager, which of course will allow us to manage the contents that we have, and we don't have anything yet, so I'm not going to click there. Then we have the content type builder. The content type builder allows us to build a schema essentially for the content. So what are the fields, the properties of certain content types that we want to have? And once we have that, we can then go into the content manager and start adding content. The media library is going to be the place where we're going to store, uh, you know, images if you want to. So it has uh, uh, this dedicated space for image storage. And you can, of course, install plugins such as the Cloudinary plugin so that your images would be uploaded to Strapi, but then eventually stored at another provider. Then we have plugins. So these are going to list the plugins that we have for uh, our Strapi instance installed. The marketplace is quite a new thing. So let me just click here uh, and visit the web marketplace. So these are essentially plugins that you can go and install and enable for your Strapi instance. And notice I have version four selected here. And maybe you want to you know, enable GraphQL for your Strapi instance so that your data can be consumed via GraphQL service as well. So you can click here and all you need to do is install the GraphQL plugin. 
and there's going to be some additional tools uh, added here and of course this marketplace is going to grow eventually and then in settings this is the place where you can manage your users your webhooks configure the email plugin which is again a built-in plugin that uh, strapi enables when you installed it first time there are some advanced settings uh, that you can change you can manage your roles you can manage your users but more on that later okay so this is a very brief preview of this strapi dashboard and the admin ui and in the next video we're going to explore this further by creating our first content type